finally over. The Count is dead, and the world is safe once again. And yet, I cannot help but feel that somehow it isn't really over. Nonsense! It is done. He is but a pile of dust. Now, perhaps we can be free to finally have our honeymoon? Or perhaps not. My nose, Nina, why? I... I'm sorry, Johnny. I think I'm not fully recovered from the Count's influence yet. I'm bleeding! Let us away from this place. We'll send someone to pick up Prince's body. I hear it takes a long time for Americans to spoil anyway. All right, Jonathan. We will go. Rising up, back from the dead Did some time as some ashes Went to London, now I'm back at my crib An undead with the will to survive It's the might of vampires It's the thrill of the fight Coming back to destroy all my rivals And the last few survivors are my prey in the night and I'm haunting them all with the might of vampires. Welcome to the Fury of Dracula. This is the third edition published by Fantasy Flight Games. And in this game, it is the Hunters versus Dracula. So it's cooperative in the effect that uh, the players who play the Hunters are all working together to defeat the one player who is playing Dracula. And you're going to have all four hunters in the game, regardless of the number of players. That so are. let's take a look at how this is going to be accomplished. Over here we have a map of Europe with different cities, major cities, and railways and roads connecting them. There are also ocean spaces or sea spaces that players and Dracula can travel through. Dracula is hidden somewhere in here. The players don't have any clue as to where he is. Dracula chooses where he's going to start the game, and he can't start the game in the same space as another player. That just wouldn't be fair. So his little token starts in this little space here, and you never know where Dracula is until you've actually found him. Now, it's not easy to find Dracula, but it is possible to be done. The player's goal is to find Dracula, and kill him. He takes 15 points of damage. They have to fight him until he is dead. Dracula's goal is to build his influence over all of Europe until he is so strong that he will never be able to be defeated by anybody, and thus Dracula wins the game. How that's represented in the game is by this influence track here, which goes up to 13. There's different events that cause Dracula's influence to increase until, once it hits 13, Dracula wins. As time goes on, it does get a little bit harder for the players as Dracula builds his influence. We have a time track here, and each space on this track represents uh, a half a day of a week. So you start Monday during the day, then you would move to Monday at night, Tuesday day, Tuesday night, all the way around. And every time you pass the complete week, you add a despair token to the board. And this despair token... What it does is it shows Dracula's building in So whenever a hunter is defeated by Dracula, you would advance the, dis the, uh, the track by two plus the number of despair tokens on the board. And once you have all three there, every time Dracula chooses a new location to go to, he gets to advance the influence track by three spaces if all three despair tokens are on there. So once three weeks are, are complete, Dracula's going to win pretty quick unless you've got him nailed down. Ha! Stake down, I should say. The game operates in turns, which is quite logical. The player gets to go first. They have different actions they can take. They can move, and they can, they'll be able to move via roads or by railways using these railroad tokens, which is another action that you can do. You can reserve a railroad token to move to be able to move along the railway lines, and you can spend those during your turn. You can have up to two railway tokens, but as you can see they're all face down. You don't know what it's going to say until you actually draw it. This would enable you to move two spaces along the white railway lines or two spaces along the yellow. 
The other actions a player can do is they can do a supply action. A supply action, if they're in a major city, they get to draw an item card. There's a whole stack of item cards. They are mostly to do with combat. This is like a pistol. And each player can have up to a certain number of item cards, as is listed on their character sheet. For example here, Nina is already bitten once, which is why you see that mark there. If she's bitten again, she is in trouble. She has nine health, and down here you can see she can have up to three item cards. There are also special abilities, and it also gives you a little information on like the turn sequence of the Hunter phase and the Dracula phase. All of the players have different abilities, and they ex are executed in a certain order. So the player order is always going to be Lord Goldeming, Dr. Seward, Van Helsing, and then Mina. You can see she goes fourth, because there's a four up there. So they get to take one action during the day. It can be the movement. It can be supply. If it's in a big city, like I said, they get to draw one item card, but they also draw one event card from the top of the deck. If it's a Dracula card, because there are Dracula events in here too, and they're drawing during the day, then the Dracula card gets discarded. If they're doing a supply at night and they draw an event card, they have to draw from the bottom. And if that is a Dracula card, then Dracula is handed that card by the player without the player looking at it. So that, you know, kind of makes you a little leery of trying to supply during the evening phase. The players can also rest, which gives them one life point back. They can perform a trade action with another player if they're located in the same city. They can do a special action that is on one of their cards that they've received. Or they can do a search, which they can search the city that they're in to see if there's any clues for Dracula there. If Dracula has been there, and it's on this Dracula track over here on the side, then Dracula has to tell them and be, have an encounter with whatever is in that location. And that will tell them that Dracula has been there and depending on where it is, it will show them how recently it has happened. So let's, well, let's finish with the players first. After the players go through the day, then it moves to nighttime. Uh, first, dusk happens, and if there's any combat going on, the combat happens right then. Combat happens at dusk and at dawn, and then the players would go to the nighttime phase, where they each get to take one more action. They cannot move during the night, because, you know, Dracula's out there. It'd be crazy. Once they finish that, Dracula gets to take his turn, and what Dracula is going to do, you have an entire deck of location cards for Dracula. Dracula is going to choose one based on where he already is, and in this particular game, Dracula is starting off in Rome. But of course, only Dracula knows that. So Dracula is going to say he's in Rome. Let's say he wants to move to Florence. So you would look through here. They're all numbered and in alphabetical order. You find Florence. Dracula moves his location card one up. He places Florence there. And then he can place one encounter card in that spot. He starts with five encounter cards. And he always has five. So if he uses one, he just draws another one. So he could place a reckless vampire there. Or a spy. Or a saboteur. Or rats. There's different effects that happen. Let's say Dracula decides to place... A reckless vampire there. That will initiate combat too if the players find them. Then he draws another encounter card. And that's pretty much Dracula's turn. Now, later on, if the players happen to go to Florence, and this moves down slowly and gets recycled off the end, so that there's usually only six here, except when you're playing the advanced rulers, you have three extra spaces, which you can set up as lairs. And lairs are just extra spaces where Dracula has saved encounters, and Dracula gets to add an extra encounter when he places one of his matured locations into a lair. Sometimes he would want to do that, sometimes he wouldn't. Why wouldn't he? Well, let's see. If this reckless vampire makes it all the way to the end of the track and gets moved off without the players finding him, then the matured effect happens. Reveal this location card, advance the influence track by four, then clear this hideout, and the hideout's on the fourth, fifth, and sixth spaces on the trail. That's what these are called, are hideouts. So if Dracula manages to get him off the end of the track without the players finding him, he would gain four influence for that vampire. Which is pretty scary!
combat would happen if the players found that encounter. Let's say Mina goes there, she finds it, and she Dracula then has the ability to either ambush the players by revealing that encounter right then, or just leaving it there. Then the players have to search to see what's there, and if the players search, then the vampire is revealed. But if they don't bother to search while they're there, then that vampire stays hidden and gets to keep moving down the track. It all depends whether Dracula wants to ambush the players or not. Now, combat would occur, let's say the vampire was revealed, combat would actually happen after the end of Dracula's, or whoever's turn it is, because it only happens at either dawn or dusk. So after everyone's finished their actions, then it moves, and you'll know whether it's dawn or dusk, and then the combat would occur. Play continues with Dracula moving through Europe, trying to avoid the players. He can see the players at all times. The players are trying to track him down by the trail that he leaves. You know, once he, let's say, Florence is revealed, and they know he's been there, and they know about how many turns ago he was there, so they can count, like, okay, maybe he's over this way. Let's send somebody that way, or let's send somebody this way. They try to narrow it down until they can pin Dracula down, find him, and hopefully kill him during combat. Combat is all driven by cards. There are no dice, which is a change from the uh, the first edition. And it is quite interesting. I did a separate video on combat to show you how that all works. Finally, there are also uh, special powers that Dracula has when you're playing the advanced game that allow you to do special things as Dracula by placing one of these cards on your uh, location track. Like wolf form. When you place this card on the trail, choose a city up to two roads away. Dracula can only move one road, and he can't go along the railways. But by playing this, he gets to go two cities, thereby making it diff more difficult for them to find you. Or Dark Call. When you place this card on the trail, suffer two damage and draw five encounter cards. So if Dracula's running low on encounter cards, his hand is unlimited. So he can draw up to five more cards, and woo lots of more scary things to do. And there's other examples. Play continues, weeks going by, players tracking them down, Dracula trying to uh, build his influence, and whoever satisfied the win conditions first wins. Now, this is a very thematic game. You really feel like you're immersed in the world of Dracula, and it's a lot of fun. It does take some time to play, though. And that's just a quick look at the fury of Dracula. Combat has been improved in this, the third edition. Gone are the dice in the game. There is no more rolling for a hit. Both Dracula and the Hunters have combat cards. Dracula has a stack of attack and defense cards of which he can draw five, and he will draw a new one after each round of combat. The Hunters have three default attack and defense cards, punch, dodge, and escape, and they can pick up items during play that can add to their arsenal, like rifles, knives, pistols, garlic, and things like that. During combat, both players select the card and reveal them simultaneously. The Hunter's card can cancel Dracula's card if he chooses an appropriate counter. For example, a crucifix can counter Dracula's fangs, or prevent him from mesmerizing you. It will also stop him from escaping his mist. You compare the icons of the two cards to see if Dracula's card is cancelled, and it makes thematic sense. If Dracula's card is not cancelled, then the event on it takes place, like causing damage, mesmerizing, or escaping. Finally, the hunter's effect is resolved if it was not cancelled by Dracula's card. The round ends, and then a new one takes place. This continues until either one of the players is defeated or escapes, or after six rounds. Hunters do get their items back, but there is a one-round delay. You can't use the same weapon twice in a row. It streamlines the combat fairly well, but if you like the luck involved with the dice in combat, you will not see any of that in this edition. Time and influence have also been redone. Dracula now needs 13 influence to defeat the hunters, but his power grows the longer it takes the hunters to defeat him. The game is segmented into days and weeks, and each day has both a day phase and a night phase. Dracula gets his action once at the end of each day. If the game should go on for longer than three weeks, Dracula will win automatically in a matter of days, as he starts gaining three influence each turn when placing a city location card. This adds to the tension and sense of urgency in the game, and prevents the game from going on forever. I find this is the most thematic version of Fury of Dracula yet. I found it immensely satisfying that... Mina and the gang are tracking down Dracula, while Jonathan stays at home with the kids. Granted, it seems second edition was the same, but I don't have that edition. This is, at its core, a cat and mouse game. 
with the added fun that the mouse can attack the cats when the conditions are right, if he shall so desires, and potentially put some cats in the hospital. There is no player elimination. If Dracula dies, the game is over. Hunters merely go to the hospital and lose time and their stuff. The way that this game has evolved over the years into this fully thematic and entertaining game of horror really makes me happy. I love playing this game. If I can work it into a game night, you'll still end up playing two or three hours after becoming proficient with the game, and while this serves to help build the anticipation and tension, it can also get boring if the players are inept or unlucky at finding Dracula's trail. The rules can be the biggest time sucker in the game. <laughs> sucker. <laughs> there are many thematic elements included, but with them comes a score of minutia rules that are inefficiently scattered throughout the rulebooks. Combat with Dracula's vampire minions is a big part of the game, and the rules could have been clearer or more easily accessible in this instance. It's the same with the other rules. Really, FFG would have been well served to simply add some clarifications for every card that you use as reference as you play. Paging through the rules to find out if this or that situation is addressed takes time, and even after playing multiple times, I still find myself paging through the rulebook to figure this or that out. Don't get me wrong, though. Out of every track down the hidden player game that I have ever played, this one is by far my favorite. The game is fun and highly thematic. The components are top-notch, and setup time is minimal. It's the perfect game to bring out during October when you're looking to get everyone into the Halloween mood. You know, it was recently International Dracula Weekend. What did you do? The game is a perfect candidate for getting an electronic equivalent made. I'd love to be able to play a game against the computer AI Dracula in combination with having the board on the table. Then the computer could figure out all of the rules for me and the hunters could just get on with some hunting. You know, similar to how XCOM board game works. Man, that would be awesome. Could you get right on that, FFG? Yes. As it is, I love this game. If you're looking for something shorter to play, then this isn't the game for you. But for some good horrific fun on a dark and stormy night, pull out your copy of Fury of Dracula. And give to go. Thank you for joining me in this review of Fury of Dracula 3rd Edition from Fantasy Flight Games. Let me know if you found this review helpful by leaving a comment or sending me an email at elliot underscore miller at voice of e.com. Make sure you subscribe to the Voice of E channel on YouTube, as I'll have a lot more thematic game reviews and board game giveaways. You know, I'm working on it. You won't want to miss any of them. Please tell your friends to check out the Voice of E, and hopefully they will subscribe too. <laughs> Thanks again. And until next time, keep your mind enslaved. <laughs> Get me that ticket. We need more power. <laughs>